Hello, everybody, and welcome back to day number 10 of Raging Reveals, where every single day we'll be going through all of the announcement for Leaks 5 as we count down to the launch date on November 27th. Yesterday, we saw Combat Masteries, a massive new progression system to Leaks 5, which will open up some crazy new builds and allow you to specialize as well as hybrid as you'd like. I know I've already been going back and forth so many times, I think I changed my build like seven times yesterday. Today's announcement is a series of quality of life features coming to Leagues 5. So yeah, not really the most interesting. No, I'm actually kidding. There's some really good changes here that I think are going to uh, change what you're thinking about for Leagues and might even move you off a region or two. So let's start off with mini reveal number one. Everybody will now be able to purchase a max cape from the Sage in Lumbridge upon reaching max level, regardless of what regions you have. The Sage is kind of like the league's npc it just hangs out there gives you all the items and stuff it already gives you your combat achievement reward so you don't need ascarnia for that and well now you can also get a max cape you won't need ascarnia for that either and i think that that's been one of the best items you can get from that region first off i think that this is a really good change that's going to reward people for grinding to max in leagues but it also has the added bonus of inheriting all of the skill cape perks, which you might not have access to based on your region selections. Some examples of that are the mage guild giving you the mage cape. So you would need Kandarin for that. That allows you to change some of your spell books. The range cape actually acts as Ava's accumulator. So if you don't have Fremenic to auto unlock that, you would need Ascarnia and Mauritania to actually complete animal magnetism. And the range cape gives you that 50% ammunition bonus without actually needing those region combinations. It's pretty good, but let's be real. If you're going ranged, you're probably going Fremenic this year anyways. I really love this change, and I hope that this encourages you to go for max level this league. Next up, rocks, trees, respawnable items, and main world NPCs will respawn faster than the main game. This is going to be three times faster in most cases, and much higher for some cases such as Runite Rocks. I know that a lot of people were worried that with Power Miner, sure, you'll be able to get five times rocks, but, you know, if it takes like nine minutes for some of these nodes to respawn, then you're going to be world hopping a lot. Well, it seems that in general, all resource nodes are going to be respawning faster. This means less time waiting and more time actually skilling and playing the game. And those really rare resources, such as Runite Rocks, we don't have a full list yet, but I feel like this is going to make those a much easier training method. Those tier one harvest relics really get a lot of benefit from doing very difficult nodes that have a high failure rate. And I think that that's going to make it feel a lot better and you're not having to like world hop to actually catch them. I'm also really curious about those respawnable items and those main world NPCs, as I think this is also going to make Slayer feel a lot better when, you know, mobs are just spawning a lot faster and you're not having to wait for them and you can share it with a lot more people just because you're not competing as much. Okay, number three, clans can now toggle shared leagues related broadcasts, including Relic, area, rank, and combat mastery achievements. These will be clearly different from the normal broadcasts, and they'll have the league symbol next to the player's name. I know in dead man mode, I was spamming my clan, getting drops, and everybody's like congratulating me, and I'm like, no, it's, it's dead man mode, there's boosted rates, like I'm not actually getting this lucky. And I also really love that they have these specific leagues announcements as well, things like unlocking your areas, unlocking your relics, or getting certain mastery points. I think it's going to be a lot of fun in those first couple of days to see how everybody else is progressing and, you know, congratulating someone when they finally hit their third area and whatnot. Next up, Zolra is no longer immune to melee damage and also has no damage cap. So if you have a melee weapon that could reach, it is now a viable choice for killing Zolra. So things like the new Noxious Halberd or perhaps the Hispori so things like the Noxious Halberd, which could actually reach Zolra, but Zolra was immune to melee, so it didn't really work. Now that's actually an option for taking on Zolra. It also means that the Nature's Reprisal, the new Echo Reward from Hispori, will also be uh, useful here. And you'll actually be able to take on Zolra with melee, and I think that makes Tyranwyn a very solid melee option now. Remember that the salamander that you get from Echo Hispori, or as I like to call it, the Hispori Trumpet, that also benefits from the Crystal Armor bonus if you have the Crystal Blessing in the Tyrion 1 region. Unfortunately, I don't know if this also applies to Leviathan as well as possibly Zuck, and I'd be curious to see if that still works against them. I think it should be yes, but 
I haven't seen any confirmation about those two. I know that that's a place where melee also kind of struggles. All right, reveal number five. Rather than receiving a twisted bow from the Chambers of Zarek, a scythe from the Theater of Blood, or the shadow from Tombs of a Masket, you'll now instead receive a mega rare voucher, which can be given to the sage for the weapon of your choice. We already knew that raids will award all three of the mega rares now, but now we know how you'll actually be obtaining them. This means regardless of what raid you end up doing, once you hit that mega rare voucher, you can pick the specific mega rare that you'd like. And it's also going to make sure that you're not getting any duplicates. So you're not going to be swimming in like five twisted bows before your first sight. I mean, I guess you could redeem them all for twisted bows if that's what you're into. Now, the only thing about this is I'm not sure how the drop rate will actually play out. I feel like it reads like it's just going to be identical to the drop rates uh, from the past. This does mean that you are going to have to grind out three of these if you want all three items, though. So, um, you know, that is going to be quite a lot of raids that you're going to be doing. But I think the most important thing that people had questions about is that if I do a raid, am I like, you know, hurting my chances of getting the mega rare I actually want? And that doesn't seem to be the case. You'll, you'll do whatever raid you want. You'll get your mega rare voucher. You'll get your, you know, item and you'll be fine. Next up, reveal number six. Instances have been created for Cerberus, Seracnus, and the Thermonuclear Smoke Devil. They've also removed the timer when attempting to enter a Dagonoth King's instance shortly after leaving. This is a massive quality of life update because all of these bosses in seasonal modes have struggled competing with other players when they don't have access to your own private instance that you can enter, and having to hop worlds constantly to find a empty world is just not a fun feeling. This is really going to make grinding those kill count tasks a lot easier when you're not having to, you know, fight for your world. Keep in mind, however, that Last Recall has been used specifically for bosses like Cerberus. You could actually teleport out when Cerberus would spawn ghosts and then last recall back instantly and the ghosts would basically not do anything. So if you are running total recall this year, you may want to consider opting for the non-instance version so you could still take advantage of that. In fact, with total recall, you'll basically be able to set your save state right next to you and then instantly restore your health, your prayer and your special attack without having to move at all. So if you're going Banker's Note, please do us a favor and go to the instance, all right? Let Total Recall players have fun in the non-instance version. Again, this is just really awesome for Zaya with Seracnus, Asgarnia for Cerberus, and Fremenic for those Dagonoth Kings. I don't know how much this helps Kandarin, however, as there's probably going to be two empty worlds per person who picked Kandarin anyways. Moving on to reveal number seven, Tormented Demons will be accessible without needing to complete while Guthic sleeps, meaning the only requirement is a Sapphire Lantern. We kind of saw this hinted at with the combo item drops. We saw that Tormented Demons are going to be accessible to everybody with just Mistalin. And just like the Desert Treasure 2 bosses can be fought without requiring the quest, you'll also be able to do Tormented Demons. And while Guthic sleeps will not be auto-completed, so you're not going to get the benefit of all of those preliminary quests. I think the big thing here is everybody will have access to those Demon Bane weapons that you get. You'll actually be able to take a Torment synapse and like right click it and turn it into one of the three options just kind of similar to the mega rare voucher meaning everybody will also have access to ember light the scorching bow and the purging staff these demon bane weapons are surprisingly strong i think i might be using them for something like abyssal sire and they might be very good entry weapons for cerberus the duke or krill in the god wars dungeon now one thing about this is that the zombie axe will probably not be accessible with just Mistalin. It's a very strong weapon with the melee relics, but it does seem like you'll need all three, Framinic, Escarnia, and Desert to have access to it. Okay, and so in true League's fashion, right as I'm uploading this video, new information comes out that invalidates what I'm saying. Zombie axe is actually going to be made available to everybody. Defender of Varrock will be auto-completed, and I'll also throw in right now that the Framinic Trials and the Framinic Isles will be auto-completed. Thank you, God, those quests suck. And also Olaf's quest so you won't have to pass like over the barrel. Oh, and there's also a skip cutscene for the giant dwarf. Pretty big if you're going Fremenic and you just hate questing. Speaking of the Duke, reveal number eight, potions and ingredients sourced during the Duke's succulus fight will no longer be removed from your inventory when you wake the Duke, meaning you'll spend less time running back and forth and more time PVMing. The Duke sucks in leagues because you had to spend so much time prepping the potions and mining the salt and doing all of that. And when you have so much more power in leagues, having that static downtime that isn't really affected that much by your relics just ends up consuming a disproportionate amount of time that you'd rather be actually using your DPS relics and, you know, just slamming the boss down in seconds. And I think that this turns the Duke from one of the worst bosses in seasonal modes to actually one of the best sources in the entire game 
for Virtus and the Soul Reaper Axe. Those items on the shared Desert Treasure 2 drop table will actually be dropped at a very fast rate when this boss was kind of balanced around that prep time in mind. Remember, Soul Reaper Axe can be obtained from any Desert Treasure 2 boss. They will drop all four of the components. And I think that this is really huge for the Fremenic region. It's going to be one of the best ways of getting those items. This just makes the Duke more fun. And that's the most important thing for me about leagues. I don't really care about what's balanced. I just want things to be fun. Doing the Duke prep is straight up just not fun. Okay. It just isn't not in leagues. And I think things like this, removing the melee restriction and the damage cap from Zolra is just going to make those bosses that suffer from the transition to leagues a lot better. I'm really looking forward to this. I cannot wait to get into this with one of those demon bane weapons. And finally, reveal number nine, Pet cosmetic overrides are now carried over between leagues, including any that you might have unlocked in Trailblazer Reloaded, but not prior leagues. So this means that anything you got in leagues for last year will carry over this year as well as future leagues, but not for the first three leagues. Man, I love this change. There is something so beautiful about everybody grabbing, you know, their old little pets from last year and pulling them out. Especially since with the region locked format, you might not even have access to that boss this year. I know my pet Thermi is going to be following me around because I don't think I'm going Kandarin. And damn it, I wish I knew about this last year, okay? Because I'm pretty sure I didn't bother with grinding out all the like cosmetics from uh, Tombs of a Masket. And now I'm like, wait, I could have had a pet Zevac this year. Like, what? It's a great change. And I know a lot of people have been asking for it. I know a lot of people actually use leagues as like their main motivation is to grind out all the pets and stuff. Pets aren't boosted by the drop rate, so they're actually still insane grinds even in leagues. And I know that I'm definitely going to be going for some this year because I had the worst luck last year. I don't think I got a single pet, man. It was awful. And so that's all of the reveals for today. I know that individually, none of them are as crazy as getting a new relic, but I think overall, these quality of life updates are just so important to make leagues enjoyable and fun to play. Let me know what your favorite quality of life update is. I think I'm really excited to hear more about those faster respawns. And I think those clan broadcasts are also going to add a really cool sense of community to the game as well. Thank you guys for watching. Tomorrow, we've got multiple new relics being revealed. So another huge reveal to look forward to.